YouTube Oz it going. The Goat Owls is back, rating every single NFL team's 2024 draft class all in this video. Head over to our channel, check out those recent NFL draft videos. Even on draft a free agency video, you will not be disappointed. On to the grades. Patriots gave him a B plus. They started off with a bang with Drake May. Huge fan of Drake May. Uh, next couple of picks, guys that can contribute, guys that I like. Polk Walls, a, a little early. Robinson, a solid pick. Baker could be just as productive as Polk, really, in year one. I like Polk a little bit better. Uh, the Milton pick was interesting. At first glance, it's like, do they really need to draft two quarterbacks in this class? But what if May pans out, looks pretty damn good? I'm counting on it. And then teams are going, well, they developed that guy pretty well. What about his backup? What if they developed him pretty well? They trade for a guy like Milton. Maybe a little bit of an investment there. On the Gene Bell, I, I thought it was a pretty good value pick. Uh, good after the catch tight end for Florida State. Felt like a B-plus draft to me. Uh, the Jets, I wasn't in love with the Jets draft. It's not terrible by any means, but wasn't a huge fashion new guy, but a pretty good situation for him to learn behind Tyrone Smith. Corley, right around where he should have went. I, I think he'll be used a bit, mainly as a gadget type receiver, at least at first. They drafted a couple running backs. They already got a couple running backs in the roster. Pretty solid. I, that's right around where Braylon Allen should have went. He's really young, has upside. Um, Isaiah Davis, I wasn't a huge Davis guy. Thought he tried to bounce too many runs out. Played a lot you know, weaker competition as well. Uh, Travis, it's a pretty good backup, I, su I suppose. Smart kid. Did you have to trade up for him, though? Stiggers. I, I know a lot of people like Stiggers you know, from Toronto Canadian Football League. But, man, it's a different situation. But every offseason, teams add the best the star players from the canadian football league and it's a very 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 low percentage chance that they kind of work out uh but this is a little different of a situation as a draft eligible guy you know young pretty damn good has upside so the percentage raises but still you know and then key was the last pick of the draft it's just uh, how much of an impact do you get early on from this class is not a huge factor but it's a plays a little part um the good picks that they did have they were just like Nothing was wow. It was kind of right around where they should have taken those guys. So uh, it was, you know, two running backs, a little odd. So interesting class. Again, wasn't awful. Dolphins. Dolphins had a, had a pretty damn solid draft, actually. I knew they kind of did, but after evaluating it as a whole, I was like, yeah, man, this is a pretty good draft. Chop Robinson. Um, I, I like Chop Robinson. I was a fan of him. Explosive pass rusher, upside through the roof. Good situation for him with those other pass rushers there. Patrick Paul, right around where he should go, but it seems like a really good option to put behind uh, Armstead uh, on, at the left tackle spot, learn from him, and he might be, have to play early on, which he has experience to do so. I was a huge Jalen Wright guy, second overall running back. How much is he going to play right away? But this could be the future Mostert, you know, and then him and A-Chan could be a really good duo. Uh, Kamara seemed to be a fan favorite. I, I wasn't as high on as most uh, because he has some short steps, no stride. Uh, but in the fifth round, this is an explosive, productive player. I think that's pretty solid. Malik Washington's a very safe pick, value pick at, in the round in, at round six. Uh, really solid slot receiver. You get another one in Taj Washington, which I thought was underrated. He's actually the better of the USC receivers. So overall, you get some value. You get some guys that can help him. You, got, you just get some really good ball players here that I like. So an A for the Miami Dolphins. Bills, I'm also going to give him an A. Um, if I had to pick, probably lean the Dolphins. Uh, if I had to compare. Uh, Dolphins a little closer to being A+. Plus. The Bills are a little closer to being A-. minus. But A drafts, I mean, this is a pretty good haul. Uh, Keon Coleman, I thought they could have went with a couple different receivers, but it's still a second-round uh, receiver here that uh, they traded back from, uh, you know, a couple times to get. And it says a one by his name, but it was their first pick, you know, second-round pick. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, he's a good situation for him. I love Cole Bishop, and I especially love the fit with Buffalo. Carter's going to be solid for them. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to contribute right away. Um, Cedric Van Pran as well. I mean, he could start early on. Uh, Solomon, I, I like as a pick. He can contribute early on. Grable is a high upside tackle. The guy used to play quarterback. Uh, I think it's a pretty good situation. You get a good slot corner in Hardy. Uh, intriguing. The kid from England, you know, the rugby player from England. Uh, intriguing. So this is a... Pretty solid draft, and there's some sneaky candidates to contribute right away for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the Commanders got an A, one of the better drafts, I thought, as well, as they should. They had a lot of picks, too. Jane Daniels, I would have preferred Drake May, but Daniels is a good player. Uh, Johnny Newton's you know, a really good value pick in the second round, and they you know, could 
use him early on, but how much? I guess that's the only thing, but I, that's a really good value pick. And then Mike Sane were still, uh, I thought was a solid pick. I think a good playmaker in the slot for Dan Quinn's defense. Sin- Sinnott was one of my favorite players in the draft. Uh, Coleman's going to help him early. I thought McCaffrey was a little bit of a reach. Uh, McGee, solid. Hampton, solid. Javante, Gene Baptist. These are, solid, these are solid picks. Every pick is good except for the McCaffrey one, but he, he is solid. Um, so this is a really solid draft for the Commanders. A pretty good haul. A lot of guys that could contribute right away. Uh, the Giants gave him a B plus. It's a solid B plus draft. I mean, Neighbors is explosive. Obviously, Newbin's a solid pick. Getting guys right around where they should go. I wasn't a huge Theo Johnson guy compared to most, but right around a, you know where he should go. I'm not going to complain about that. I wish he was better after the catch, but um, Phillips solid. I love the Tracy pick. I think he's going to contribute early on. It's a sneaky good pick for, for the Giants. Uh, you know, so no bad picks at all. All solid picks. There's nothing super, super flashy to kind of put them in the A range maybe. I know Neighbors is a flashy player, but in terms of value. Um, so I just felt like a good, solid B-plus draft for the New York football giants. Eagles get an A. We're kind of used to seeing that. Quinio Mitchell was really good value. Cooper DeGene, they traded a lot away, but he was good value, and they kept trading to get picks back as well, so I did like that. But DeGene's going to be used all over the place for them, so that I, that's what I love. Like, if somebody took DeGene for outside corner, I wasn't going to like the pick. If somebody take him, took him to use him everywhere, like safety mainly, I was going to love it. Boom. Eagles are going to do that. Uh, Jalex Hunt, upside guy. Went a little earlier than I thought, but it's okay. Um, Will Shipley, solid around that range. Smith, maybe a little earlier, but he's explosive. Trotter Jr. is a really good pick. I could see him making an impact early um, for the Eagles there. And then we got... Uh, Trevor, Ke- where you were, I lost my spot. Yeah, Keegan was a good pick. Johnny Wilson wasn't a huge Wilson guy, but right around that range. McMahon's got a lot of upside. That's a sneaky one as well. It's a good A draft for the Philadelphia Eagles. A uh, lot of good players that can contribute early on here. I like the Cowboys draft. If you want to talk to people about the Cowboys draft, the first thing that's going to come up, the thing that comes up most is they didn't take a running back, and they're kind of making fun of the Cowboys for that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take a look at this draft, and I think it's a really solid draft. And I didn't love theirs last year. I I, I love it. It seems like every other year for the Cowboys. Guyton, I love what they did at the start. Um, I graded that very highly if you saw my round one grades. Um, Nealon, uh, Nealon was a big riser for me over the process. A lot of upside. BB I liked in the third round. Uh, Leofile was growing on me. He's a late riser up the linebacker board because he is a, like a boomer bust guy while playing. Like he, he makes crazy good plays and then there's some really bad plays, but so I'm like, I'm just remembering the good and remembering the NFL teams can get the most out of him. And then Mike Zimmer, especially. Uh, so I actually like that pick, even though it might seem a little early, uh, Carson, a solid pick in round five. Um, Nathan Thomas is one that stands out in the later picks. This is like, there's no bad picks, no bad picks at all. Some really good fits. In some solid value, guys, that contribute right away. So I love the Cowboys draft. Gave it an A. Uh, Bengals, I'm going to go C+. Plus. Um, you know, okay draft. Mims was a guy that was moving down my board as time went on. You, in the beginning, it's like you love the traits. He came from Georgia, but then this guy had to come off the field at times, you know, and then he was injured, and he got injured at, at the Combine. So you do really worry about that, and the Bengals haven't had the best of luck with offensive lines. So... Um, it's, it's a, it's not, you know, it's a risky pick, boom or bust pick. Chris Jenkins, I think it's a safe bet to be good. Um, it's an all right pick Burton. If he, you know, there's some character concerns, but he could be really good for them. I thought McKinley Jackson was a little early. That felt like they were, Hey, let's take our chances on these D tackles, you know, here. And that was kind of cause they lost readers. So that was kind of the thinking there. Um, Eric, all, if he's healthy, he's solid, but a little bit. So they, they had some risky picks, uh, Josh Newton, um, wasn't super high on him. I was high on him after two seasons ago, but uh, you know that was when he was playing like all man coverage. You got to play a little zone in this Bengals defense. McLaughlin, I love that pick. I mean, it was one of my favorite tight ends in the class. So I absolutely love that pick. When he's healthy, he's going to contribute. Cedric Johnson's a solid pick. Uh, Anthony's a solid pick. Uh, so they have some. They kind of made some money with the. Uh, and there's okay picks before that, but McLaughlin, Cedric Johnson, Anthony, like those are solid picks. Uh, Burton's a solid, pick, you know, but. There's some risky picks, some a little early. Uh, how much, you know, I put a lot more stock in the teams that have a lot of picks. Like, I expect you to knock it out of the park, you know. And I don't know how much uh, of these guys are going to contribute right away when you had a lot of picks. And I, I know the Bengals roster is pretty good, so that probably plays a part of it. But 
there, there's some really good things here, and there's some okay things. I end up giving it a C plus. Steelers, another A. I, I only had two teams that got an A plus last year. The Steelers were one of them. They get an a, nobody got an A plus this year, but they but a lot of teams did very well. Um, they got an A this year. Troy Fatanu was a really solid pick. That was a really good scenario for them. Frazier, it's right around where he should go, but it's a good pick. Uh, Roman Wilson is one of my favorite picks of any pick in the entire draft. He's going to be very productive early on. He's my receiver six. Love that. Pace, Peyton Wilson, excuse me, Roman Wilson, Peyton Wilson. Uh, Peyton Wilson, it seems like people talk about that one like I talk about the Roman Wilson pick. I, I'm more of the Roman Wilson pick. Peyton Wilson, this is like, he's a good this is a good pick, good player. It's right around where he should go, though. I think some people are a little hyped on him because of his production. He does have injury concern. The play strength's a little bit of a concern, but a flashy do-it-all type linebacker, overall good pick. Mason McCormick, kind of another one. Like, he got a lot of hype. Um... But I, but this is a good pick still. Like, this is a really solid pick. He's kind of has a hot and cold moments on tape, but he can contribute for them. Logan Lee, okay down there. Ryan, like, these are okay six-round six, six round picks there. But um, really good picks and really good value, especially with Fatano and Wilson there at the top. It's a solid A draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Next, the Browns. Uh, we gave the Browns a very high grade for a, a small amount of picks last year. Um, you know, and some of the steals they were getting, like Dewan Jones. That was one of the better, like, shorter drafts I've ever seen last year. This year, not as good, but pretty solid. There's nothing like sexy about this, I suppose, but it feels like a B plus, pretty close to being a B, B, B plus draft. Uh, Michael Hall Jr. Um, I, I like, uh, you know, he's a little bit of a tweener, but he's explosive as a pass rusher from the interior. Zinter, if he's healthy, he's really solid, but it kind of adds to the injury problems from the offensive line. Thrash was a good pick in, in round five. Could, could, uh, Separate pretty well. Watson, okay, in round six. Harden's a sneaky pick in round seven. So, I mean, it's there's no bad picks at all. Like, nowhere near a bad pick. Pretty balanced. It just, yeah, it's, it's close to being a B. A B, B-plus draft. It's been pretty solid for not having a first-round pick, I, I thought. Just wasn't quite as good as last year's draft, but pretty solid. Ravens, A-minus. This is like A-minus, A range. It's really close to being an A. Uh, Wiggins, solid. Do worry about the durability. It's popped up multiple times on top of him being really thin, and it kind of fits in with the Ravens, unfortunately, with some of the guys that get beat up with them. But if he's out, he can be good. Rosengarten right around where he should go. Probably going to start. Isaac I thought was a really good value pick. Uh, he, he could play a lot. Tez Walker's right around where he should go, but it's something they really needed. TJ Tampa was a steal. I'm not, I'm not surprised he went in the fourth round just because he's kind of scheme dependent. Uh, but it's a really good value pick. Rasheen Ali, right around where he should go, sort of. Same with Leary. I kind of like those picks, though. Um, And everything stands out a little more than the seventh round. But it just seemed like a a solid Ravens draft. Like, anywhere from the – like, I don't think anyone's going to be lower than a B plus. I don't think anyone's going to be higher than an A. It's kind of in that range. Um, So we gave him an A minus. It's probably a little closer to being an A for me than a B plus. Just one of those solid Ravens drafts with some value. Do they need two corners? Not necessarily. But they did lose Darby. But – He's some good picks. Guys that actually can contribute right away to a good football team. The Bears, I gave him an A minus. Yeah, a little bit of a tricky one because it's not a it's a great because there's not a lot of picks. I thought they were one of the biggest winners of day one. I mean, Caleb Williams, we can't like jump out of our seat for because we expected it, obviously. A Dunze was a great pick. Um, you know, and then they get Omega DJ with the third round pick, which risky pick there. It's right around where I thought he would go. But it's risky because he only played four games. He played weaker competition. He's a guy that, you know, he looks the part. He looks the part. He can become something. How badly they need to tackle, though? You know, Braxton Jones is also an upside guy. So we'll see who ends up playing. You know, definitely Braxton Jones early on. But uh, and then, well, at the time, we thought was their last pick was a punter. Like a little bit of a good punter, but a bit of a reach for a punter. So that kind of made the draft like, oh, like that's it for the Bears. And they do trade back in and get a good pass rusher, Austin Booker, who is limited experience but pretty – flashy for limited experience i wish he was a little more explosive and less patient but that could have been kansas's defense um you know having him sit and read uh, you know so overall solid draft i i think that the top of it is way more appealing than the rest um and that goes for every team in the first round usually but we're kind of looking at it even as what i do across the board um so that it was a little tricky one to grade because you, because how good it is at the top you probably keep it in the aim range it's probably Booker's a good pick. I didn't. I don't love trading a fourth round next year for a fifth this year, going backwards. But Booker was worth the fourth round pick, so kind of make an exception there. Um, 
it's pretty close to being a B plus. It's a B plus A minus range. I, they just they just got so much better in the first round that it felt like, you know, I was about to give it a B plus. It's like God, you, you almost have to give it an A minus here. So it's kind of in that range. The more I'm talking, the more okay. We're we're it's B plus A minus. That's the range there. Vikings are at a B plus. They're pretty similar as the Bears because they start off with a bang. I mean that. I mean who improved more in the first round than the Bears and the Vikings? I, I don't know if there was any other team mainly because they had two picks, but they got legit guys that can help them right away. So I thought the Vikings did very, very, even though they trade some value away, um, I thought they did very well in the first round with those. Like, that wasn't supposed to be possible. That's what I keep saying about the Vikings. Like, if you just said before the draft, yeah, the Vikings will come out with McCarthy and Dallas Turner. Everybody will be like, what? Like, there's no way. There's there's no way. Impossible. And they do it. Um, so I still think they're at about an A draft through the Kyrie Jacks pick. I like that pick. Uh, and they're probably still through Walter Rouse. That's a pretty good pick. Um, you know, he's going to be a backup, but he has the length you look for. That's a solid six round pick. Um, I didn't have, I, I'm not a big fan I and mean, they get a really good kicker, but I'm not a fan at all of drafting a kicker. It hasn't worked out, worked out specifically for the Vikings in the past too. I didn't have anything on the seventh round guys or much on them, but I, I never seventh rounds where you, you know, I never penalized for the team for the seventh round. That's kind of where you go for, uh, uh, your sleeper guys, but so it's an interesting draft. It's like they're at an A through most it and most of it, and then I really was, I was the last three picks was a little underwhelming. They did trade some value. I mean, they're kind of like the Bears. It's like B plus A minus range. End up going with the with the B plus here. They started off very very well. Packers also got a B plus, a pretty big haul. I think I liked their draft a little bit more last year, perhaps, but. Uh, pretty close to a similar style draft for them, which they knocked out of the park last year, especially like in the later rounds, and they kind of did the same thing this year. Morgan, a, a solid pick early. On. I know I know fans didn't really want to tackle, but Cooper was a really solid pick. Um, yeah, there's nothing about this draft that's like, wow, like how did they pull that guy? I mean, I really, really didn't expect Pratt to go seventh round, uh, but he's a, a lot of solid picks, and these guys are going to contribute. Cooper, Bullard, I love Marshawn Lloyd. How much is he going to c- contribute, though? Uh, Monk's a solid pick. Like He could eventually become an early starter at center, I think. Um, I actually really like the Travis Glover pick. That was one of my deep sleepers. I was a huge fan. I like that he landed on the Packers. Uh, the seven, yeah, this the those last yeah the same thing they did last year like the monk through king picks are pretty solid like there's nothing that makes you go crazy but they're just really quality picks uh i did not like the hopper williams picks like those hopper i was very surprised to see go in the third round um i did not like his tape i thought i would like it a lot more too felt like they just took a special teamer in round three and then williams it kind of like felt like the same thing i was surprised he got drafted and he went in the fourth round so you know i just he was good in fresno i just wasn't thrilled with him in oregon at all this year um so overall quality draft it probably would have been in the a range but they, they had some major reaches in, uh, according to my board uh in that three four but they get a b plus pretty good haul for them uh the lions uh, they started off with winning day one, in my opinion. They're up there with division rivals, uh, Bears and Vikings in day one. Terry and Arnold was not supposed to be there for them. Exactly what they needed. My number one corner. And they get another corner in Rakestraw Jr., which that's a really solid pick there, too. I mean, this is like the future corners of the Detroit Lions. Like, that. I mean, it's... It's great. I I did not like their fourth round at all. Uh, I didn't have anything on, on the, the the Canadian prospect. Uh, Brad Holmes definitely knows what he's doing over there. But uh, with the trades they were pulling off, I, I didn't really like those fourth round. Uh, you know, Vaki safety slash running back. Thought he was like more of a se- seventh round, sixth round maybe. Just felt like they took him because it's just like their motto of guy. Uh, their type of guy. I, I did I disliked the fourth round very much, especially with the trade ups. Um, so they went from like having an A plus draft to dropping that a little bit, but then there's like an A plus six round. I mean, Makai Wingo should have went a lot earlier. The only reason he did is because he's a little undersized, but that's an explosive ball player in the interior defense line. And Christian Mahogany is an absolute steal. I thought he could have went in the second round. Uh, I, I actually enjoyed watching his tape. Um, so it's a tricky one here. Um, if it wasn't for that fourth round, they might got an A plus. So that kind of weighed it down a little bit. But also, so I was kind of in the A A minus range. But yeah, I, I mean, they, how much of an impact? I know it's a really good roster, but you had this. The, your top picks are the same position. The rest of the guys, I don't really see playing too too much early on. Um, that plays a small percentage, but 
Um, yeah, we're, you're in that A minus A range for the Lions, but they continue to overall do a pretty solid job. Titans, I love the Titans draft, uh, and that is not really a common take I can see, but that kind of makes sense because that I'm higher on it because let's take a look at it. J.C. Latham, I felt like I was higher on him than everyone. To me, that was the clear-cut number two tackle in the draft. Devondre Sweat, I love Devondre Sweat. I had a round one grade on him until he had the D, DUI or DWI, whatever. Um, and that bumped him down just because it says he's kind of stupid to do that, you know, do it in general with that close to the draft. But I, unique player, unique player that is, has to be doubled and creates for his teammates and um, quicker than you think. And he, he can actually play more than just the nose. Uh, I love Sweat and I love him with Jeffrey Simmons on the Titans. Cedric Gray, Cedric Gray was my number two linebacker in the entire class. Uh, they get him in the fourth round. Jarvis Brownlee, I was a huge fan of Brownlee. I thought he could have went in the third round. I just love his play style and the versatility. Jackson, you get a speed receiver. James Williams, I thought he could have went a lot earlier. A good box player. And then Jalen Harrell, I thought was the better of the two edge rushers from Michigan. It's a really solid draft. Um, I guess the only knock is it's not like the most athletic draft. Um, but... I, I like the value. I like the players they got, and they got guys that are going to make an impact right away. So I really like the Tennessee Titans draft. It was actually one of my favorites. Um, so I gave them an A. Colts I gave to a B2, a little bit of all over the place. A uh, lot too, solid player. It's a lot of risk with that one. Mitchell is one of the best single picks in the entire draft. It's an A++ pick. To get a steal there, he's going to make an impact. I think he's better than Alec Pierce probably day one. Um, Goncalves a... Trade up. I don't know if it's necessary to trade up, uh, but it's a guy that's that could fill in for you at tackle or guard, perhaps. He's more of a tackle, but he's a little undersized in terms of the length. Bordellini, I think, is going to end up being a longtime starting center for them. I mean, not right away, but I think he will be. Anthony Gould, it's like a poor man's Josh Downs uh, at receiver and special teams, so it's like kind of stash that guy for now. Carl Eyes, that was a little early because I'm like, is this guy safety? Is this guy linebacker? Um, he's kind of missing a little bit for each, but you can see some upside. I like Jalen Simpson. He's definitely a free safety. I liked him. I liked him in the fifth round for them. Um, didn't have much for them on the next two picks. So it's a little bit kind of back and forth for the Colts. Um, love the Mitchell pick. It just felt like a solid B draft, uh, for me, for the Colts. They had an A plus last year. The two, only two A pluses last year were the Colts and the Steelers going to be this year. No A pluses this year. Jags. Yeah, a little all over the place as well. I love trading back and getting Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, Mason Smith, I like. I love the traits, the upside. Don't expect a ton from him right away. Um, Jerry and Jones, really solid slot corner. Maybe a little early. Uh, Javon Foster, maybe a little early as well. Um, a little stiff. Jefferson, also a little early. Jones, I'm not... I'm fine with there. But Foster, Jefferson, uh, Prince... All right, Robinson, a little bit of a you know risk. If there's such thing as a risk pick down here, I like Miles Cole in the seventh round. So it's a little all over the place. You're starting pretty good, and it's kind of going downhill for me. And then it kind of gets back a little bit back up, but it, it sort of it, it just feels like a B draft for me. Um, maybe closer to being a B minus than a B plus, but it feels like a B B draft. Uh, interesting one. Uh, the Texans gonna go B minus. Uh, overall decent, solid. I love their draft last year. Um, it's not quite the same this year, but overall, I keep it in the B range south. Lasseter, we'll see if they use him outside or inside. Um, that could determine things. Really good, just a little on the slower side. Blake Fisher, see if they use him outside or inside. Could be guard or tackle, but I like that pick. Bullock, uh, there's some talk about him them using him corner or free safety. So uh, probably free safety though. And then Stover, solid pick there. Jamal Hill, I was surprised he got drafted. It is the sixth round, though. It's like a guy, like linebacker, safety, where do you put it? He took a lot of guys that, where could they play? Um, Jawar Jordan, uh, probably by myself on an island, but I think he was the better Louisville running back. Uh, that that's. I think the other one had eye-popping traits. I think this was just the better runner for now and, the, and his career, uh, his past career. Uh, Bird in the seventh. I love Marcus Harris in the seventh. Love Marcus Harrison 7. That's a steal pick down there. Um, you know, so some that were right around where they should have went. Some a little early. There was no big, big reaches. 
but there were some that were slightly early. A lot, they had a lot of later picks, so it's it's hard to get a great grade when when you do that. So felt like a B minus. It's closer to being a B than a C plus, though. So keep it in the B range. Uh, Panthers. This was like a B or B plus. I want a B plus here. Leggett's going to contribute for them. Brooks, I think, is their best running back day one. Even though they got some solid backs, um, I love Brooks. You know, huge fan. Um, if he's healthy, he's the best one day one. Trevor Wallace, I was a big fan of Wallace. Um, I don't think he's going to play a lot year one, but he's an upside guy. I think he'll, he will he has a really high upside, really high ceiling. Sanders, I wasn't as high on Sanders as everyone else, but I had him as a fourth-round guy. It's where he went. Um, he's going to be a weapon for Bryce Young. Shaw Smith-Wade, maybe a round early. Crumity, I like. I liked him. I thought he was a big-time sleeper. It's, expect, it's where I expected him to go. But I thought in terms of his talent, he could have went around earlier. Michael Barrett's a solid seventh-round pick. So this feels like a solid B-plus draft with some upside. Seems like an upside looking at uh, Brooks as he gets healthier. Uh, Leggett just got going last year. Wallace is a pure upside linebacker. Sanders is an upside. Like right now, he's kind of like a big receiver. We need to make him a, a full-time tight end, so an upside guy. Crumity has the traits, hasn't fully put it together. Upside guy. So this is, this is a solid B-plus upside draft here for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, probably closer to being a B than an A-, minus, but we like it right at a B-plus. Falcons, I'm going to go C-plus. People are putting this one as the worst draft. I see a lot. It's not quite my worst draft. Um because there's some, it's an interesting one. Some good Michael Penix. I love, I like Michael Penix. I like his talent. I just don't like the sit. It was early though, and I don't like the situation. It's like you're hoping for Cousins to work for part of his contract, and then Penix to come in and be healthy and be solid. That's like the, for combining both those. That's like what you're hoping for. It's like such specifics, but it also means Cousins doesn't work for his whole. I don't know. He said they want Cousins to work for his whole contract. Penix is stashed for way too long. So it's a confusing one. Rook a row, row, row. Uh, you know, you see the upside. Good situation with Raheem Morris. He coached Aaron Donald. Uh, doesn't mean he's going to be Aaron Donald, but it's a guy with a lot of upside. Doesn't really have a whole lot to his game yet. Kind of just looks the part. Freaky dude. Um, I, I liked him as a third round guy. They traded up at the top of the second round. So I didn't love that. So they didn't start off too hot here, but I really like Braylon Trice. Um, you know, it's not like a wow pick. It's right around where he should go, but I like him. I think he'd come in and start for the Falcons. Brandon Dorless, this is a wow pick. I mean, that's an absolute steal. I was probably Dorless' number one supporter in terms of draft prospect, prospects. Uh, he's very versatile. He's an upside guy, though. I think he's like a Justin Matabuke. Remember, he didn't just get going until recently. Um, you know, so I really like that pick. I like Bertrand right around where he should go. It's a smart linebacker that can blitz and can cover. Jason McClellan, it's a Bama running back that was probably underrated, like underrated. So, or he is underrated. So, I think he's pretty solid. Remember, he split with Gibbs two years ago, and rightfully so. Um, Trice, Dorless, Bertrand, McClellan. You got three picks that I like. You got a pick that I absolutely love in Dorless. That range, really good. It's a really good range of their draft. It bumped everything up, kind of, from being a lesser grade. Um, I wish that those last two six round picks were seventh round picks. So it's kind of like the project guys you take a chance on. So I didn't really love those in the sixth round. Um, so it's a little all over the place. I ended up giving a C plus what saved them from being a lot lower. The worst draft is that Trice Dorless Bertrand McClellan. I actually like that, that, uh, four, four in a row right there for the Falcons. I actually really like it, but how much of an impact? That's the crazy. That's the bad part. How much of an impact is this draft class? This is a team that just made themselves like the top of the top NFC South and more. It's a team that I realistically could see before the draft getting to an NFC Championship game. You could say maybe that's the ceiling, but I could see them getting there. But then you add a quarterback to their stashing. You're you're, you're going with an, uh, they have defensive tackles, and you're, you you got to like a super high upside guy that's a little bit of a project in row row row. Trice actually might be their biggest impact right now. Dorless, I love, but he's an upside guy. You know, you have to work with him, put some strength on him a little bit. Bertrand, I like him. I don't know how much he's going to play right away. McClellan's a little down the depth chart, but I like him. The other guys aren't going to contribute too much, so it's like you don't have much impact right away in a team that's trying to take that step from like, are you getting close to the NFC Championship game type caliber team and uh, taking the next step? You're not really doing that as other teams are doing that, so... That's the tricky part, and saying that makes you want to grade it like a C- minus or a C, but there was a stretch of picks I really, really do like. Saints, the Saints had like a sneaky good draft, like not one being talked about much. Um, it, looking at it down the list up there, oh, I'm cut off. Uh, it doesn't look like the sexiest draft, but 
This is a good draft for the Saints. Fulaga was like a, a dream pick for them. It wasn't like an A-plus pick, but it was a dream pick for them. Really solid. McKinstry was a very good value pick. He should have been a first-round pick. Spencer Rattler, what I don't like is the Saints just keep trying on these mid-round quarterbacks, and usually mid-round quarterbacks don't. Like, if I was the GM, I probably wouldn't take a quarterback in round five through seven. But Rattler is a, was a top recruit for a reason. He has a lot of upside still, and, and he's better than a fifth-round guy. So overall, it's solid. But Memes means uh, maybe a, it's right around where he should go. He is slightly early, but uh, he has some upside to him. Ford, you know, maybe slightly early. Boyd, I liked in round six. Like, if this guy had had length, uh, he would be he would have went a lot earlier because he's like he's a guy that can play the nose tackle and he gets some pretty good pressure like in the passing game from a nose tackle spot. Kind of rare amount. Played weaker competition, so I don't really pay that much attention to that. But but lacking length of that position is kind of big. But that's a good pick in the sixth round. And Ezra is a high upside tackle. This is the type of pick you make in the seventh round. I thought he was better than a seventh round guy, or maybe slightly around that range. But like a super lengthy traits guy. Um, it's a Saints pick right here. I like that pick. So um, this feels like an A minus draft for the Saints. Like not sexy enough to be an A. Maybe not like flashy enough. But it's a, it's a good draft for the Saints here. Um, next, the Bucks. I'll go B minus. A little all over the place. Barton is a pretty solid pick at twenty six. I was lower on Braswell than the whole world. It felt like in those compared to people that were saying he was like an early third round pick, and I was lower on him than that. The Bucks take him in the second round. He's from Alabama. He can be something. There's something in there. Um, I, I thought he was a little, you know, he, he is explosive at his testing, but it didn't really show on the field. Tyke Smith, um, pretty versatile, can play the nickel, pretty safe bat. He can play that pretty well. I thought it was a little early. This is where I love their draft. McMillan, I was a huge McMillan fan, and I love Bucky Irving. He was my running back six. So I love those two picks. Uh, and then okay picks down the stretch. I didn't love the sixth round pick. Culp's okay in the seventh. Um, so it's pretty close to being a C plus. It's C plus B minus range. I think what saved them was, well, Barton was a good pick. There was talks about him being, you know, I have to remember that. Like more I was talking more, I was like, this is probably a C plus draft, but Barton was supposed to probably go earlier than that. He's going to contribute right away, but I love McMillan and Irving. So those three picks kind of saved them and Tyke Smith can help them. Obviously, give it a B minus. It's pretty damn close to being a C plus, though. Maybe the B minus a little generous, but it, it's right there. Uh, Charters, I'll go B. This was close to being a B minus. I was actually originally was giving it that, but then it, I'm looking through it. I'm like, these guys are going to contribute right away. A lot of these guys are going to make an impact. But Alt was a solid pick. He's going to be a really good tackle for a long time. I think they probably could have went receiver with those elite receivers. McConkey pretty solid. They did trade up for him. Colson solid there. I know that's right around where I thought he should go. Some people were higher on him. I did not love the next two picks. Uh, th- those were big time reaches for me uh, in rounds four and five. Then they kind of made up for it with Cam Hart. I like Cam Hart a lot in round f- in round five. I think you can start for them pretty early on. Vidal's a sneaky good pick, good running back from Troy at six. Brendan Rice, I, I think the fans kind of got too hyped because of the name, um, but is a solid pick down here. He just needs to get more separation. And Cornelius Johnson, you know, right around where he should go. Um, Hardball, get another one of those guys there. But so overall, it's like nothing super flashy. I mean, maybe the heart pick is a little bit. Um, you know, there's some there's some big reaches in there. Those two picks in a row. But Alt's gonna start. McConkey's gonna start and be very productive. Colson's gonna start. It'd be solid. I mean, Hart can do it as well. And then even those receivers late could probably play right away. Um so that's kind of what bumped it up for me. These guys could probably be productive right away. So give the Chargers a B for that one. Broncos, interesting one. I gave it a B. I mean, you're, I don't love the Bo Nix pick. It's a reach. It's a panic for a quarterback. It's just Sean Payton just trying to get a guy that like that looks like the guy that's worked for him in the past. I talked about it before. Like people say, well, he's a Drew, Drew Brees looking guy. He's not going to be Drew Brees. He's more like an Ian Book looking guy who Sean Payton drafted at the Saints. He's a lot better than Ian Book, but so it's more like that. Um, so I actually gave them a D minus for that one. Jonah Ellis, good pass rusher, can't really be on the field for running downs. You know, he needs a little bit more play strength. It's a D- okay pick. Like you're probably still as a whole, you're probably still in the D range. But man, oh man, did the Broncos kill it on day three? I had them winning the draft on day three. Troy Franklin, A plus pick. Chris Abrams Drain, A plus pick. Audric Estime, A plus pick. Uh, I didn't have anything uh, on the Utah receiver. 
Um, uh, the South Carolina center is a good project to, do, to go with because he's an, he has the athletic traits and the measurables, everything that you kind of look for, the traits mainly, uh, the athletic traits, I should say. Um, so we're a little all over place here. Uh, I know the top does hold a little more value, but you do kind of look at it as a whole, what I usually do with this, these things. So it's a B, and it's, believe it or not, it's actually closer to being a B-plus because of how many A-plus picks they had in a row there. So, um, But we're going to look back at this one. If Bo Nix works out or not, I don't think the chances are really with them. Not that I'm saying they're like anywhere near 0%, but if, if it's lower, that's all everyone's going to focus on in this draft class, so that's a tough part. Um, I the Franklin, KAD, and As Estime, those three picks in a row – my God, like Franklin was an early second for me. Abrams Drain was like a late two, early three. He's kind of like a boomer bust guy. He used to play receiver. That's the man I, I, I loved. He was my running back five. Day three, they crushed. I don't know if you can get better than that. Um, gave it a B. It's close to being a B plus. Just did not love the way they started. Raiders, this is like, you know, like a, kind of like a sneaky, good B plus draft. Like Bowers wasn't, was it expect, wasn't expected, but solid pick there. It's a, it's a, Really good tight end. Jackson Powers Johnson. Like, how much is he going to play right away? But it's a really good value pick. Glaze is where it was a little early. And are you going to have to be forced to put him at right tackle because you need one? I I, I liked him more as a projected guard. But we'll see. Uh, that was the only one where, you know, wasn't absolutely in love with. Richardson, it's right around where he should go. Lengthy corner with some upside. Eichenberg, right around where he should go. Um, Lob, that right around where he should go. I like the seventh round. The two DBs. Trey Taylor, I thought, could have been a fifth round pick. I love his reactions, his awareness, um, really solid, strong safety. And Devonshire uh, was solid, but he has the exact like traits you look for in a corner, uh, athletically and some measurables. Uh, so that's a guy you definitely pick around there, and he's better than around there too. Uh, and then he has a lot of ups, so he has a lot of upside. So um, I they crushed the seventh round. This is as good as it gets in the seventh round. Um you would like to hear that for other rounds, but they did well in the other rounds. So it's just feels like a, it's not a super flashy draft at all. It just feels like a very solid B plus draft. Uh, the Chiefs gave an A minus. Yeah, Worthy is just a Chiefs guy. He's got Chiefs written all over him. You know, he's going to be really good for that for for them. Sue Mattia is right around right. I thought he should go. He's probably going to start for them, though. I like Jared Wiley a lot. Like, how productive will he be early on while Kelsey's there? Maybe not much, by much, but I think he could take over for Kelsey, you know, He's not going to be Travis Kelsey, but I think he'd be really productive down the line for the Kansas City Chiefs. Hicks is a really good value pick. I think Norzad's a really good value pick. It's just how much we're going to see him. Hayden's got a lot of upside. I think it's a really good fit with the Chiefs, Bagnola's defense. I think he'd thrive in cover two, um, which the Chiefs play a bit of that and man. Um, but yeah, Hayden's an upside guy, so I do like that pick there. So it just feels like an A-minus draft for the Kansas City Chiefs. The Cardinals, like an A, is a big haul. You should get an A if you have this many picks. But Marvin Harrison Jr. is an A, a type pick. Darius Robinson, I like. Uh, Max Melton, I love. I was a huge Max Melton fan. I think he's going to start and do well. I think he's going to split his reps inside and outside and be a factor for the Arizona Cardinals. Love that pick. Trey Benson's a good pick in the third round. Isaiah Adams got some upside if you put him at guard, which I think they will. Maybe slightly early. Maybe slightly early for Tip Ryman too, but they needed a blocker to pair with Trey McBride, so it makes sense like to value blocking tight ends. And here was your best one in the class. Elijah Jones could play inside and out. Decent pick. I like Dejon Taylor Demerson for Texas Tech. It's a split field safety plus a nickel guy. Because they drafted some corners, they're going to play the nickel. I think they'll they'll use Taylor Demerson when they're when they're in a split safety like scheme. Um, you know, cover four, cover two. Um, so I do like that one. Xavier Thomas is a boomer boss guy. Like if he's healthy, he's better than a fifth round pick. I valued him around here because he, because of, you know, probably where he should go. Christian Jones, a really good value pick. It's a guy that's not going to start for them right away, but I think he very well could be their long-term right tackle unless they play Paris Johnson there, but I think they're trying to move him to left tackle. I didn't have much on Palmer or Jaden Davis, but I thought this is a really good haul. Really got good players across the board. They're going to contribute many different ways right away. So this is a really, really good haul, a draft for the Cardinals. The Seahawks, I said no one got an A-plus this year. But the Seahawks, if you take away round four, if you take away round four, this is an easy A-plus draft. Byron Murphy is my top defensive player in the draft. It's an A-plus pick. Christian Haynes, I loved it's a really good, really good right guard. Um, Should have went in the second round. Went in the third. 
Let's skip the fourth round. Nehemiah Pritchett was the guy that was growing on me as draft process went on. Good outside corner, like really good reactions, attacking downhill, very athletic. Um, I did not think he'd be the first Auburn corner off the board. I thought there was one that was better. Uh, Liam uh, Laumea from Utah is a tackle that will guard, then tackle, and now he's, we're going to move him. We're going to move him to guard because he is much better at guard. He has a lot more upside there. I thought he could have been a third round pick. And then here's the other Auburn corner that I actually really like, DJ James. I graded him as a slot corner, even though he played outside. He was good outside, mainly underneath, attacking downhill, hitting people, just really locked down underneath. So I'm going to move him to slot and you know use his, his athletic ability and his short range abil- uh, underneath ability there. Uh, and that's perfect because Witherspoon plays inside and out. So adding Pritchett, who's an outside guy, James an inside guy. When Witherspoon's outside, you use James inside. When Witherspoon's inside, you could use Pritchett if you want to on the outside. So I love that. Uh, and then you add Gerald. It's kind of like a little project in, uh, what's that, week six, round six. Um, you know, so that without the fourth, like that's an A-plus draft. Like I love the value. I love the fits. I love the picks. There's extremely good value at the top. Everything that has the makings of an A-plus draft. Fourth round, I did not love, you know, uh, Tyrese Knight was super productive for UTEP. I thought I was going to like him more than, way more than I did. I did not really like the tape. Flew past the ball carrier, had some bad reads quite a bit. I thought that was a big reach. AJ Barner, I thought it was around early, but you know, you need you kind of like the Cardinals. You need a blocking tight end here to pair with Noah Fant. Um, so you value the blocking tight ends here. Um, so that one's not bad. I, I give it an A. Uh, I just there was kind of one really big reach. Um, this was a really solid draft for the Seattle Seahawks, though. Really liked it. Rams, I wasn't thrilled with the Rams drafts. Uh, they always have guys that are sneaky picks that end up being better than expected, though. Um, but it's usually those guys you pair with Aaron Donald, and he kind of helps them get better. But So he's not there. But Jared Verse wasn't in love with the pick. I didn't anywhere near hate the pick, though. He'll probably be productive for the Rams. Braden Fisk is solid. They traded a lot away to go up and get him, um, but he'll be explosive on that D-line. Blake Corum, I thought was more of a fourth-round pick. But I guess, you know, and it wasn't a massive need. You have Kyron Williams, but he does have some durability concerns. Uh, so I guess a good guy to pair with him. Kinchins, uh, pretty good range safety, is lacking the speed and length, though. But he's, he's a playmaker. Uh, Brennan Jackson, right around where he should go. Tyler Davis, right around where he should go. Um, he's just a little undersized of a nose tackle, but he was always an impact. Get a kicker. I'm not a big take a kicker guy. Uh, Whittington, I guess, right around where he should go. Uh, Lemur is a good pick. Um you know, he can play center or guard, so quality depth right now. Could he start sometime down the line? Leviston played tackle for Kansas State, and he'll likely move to guard. He can, I like their last two picks. Like, those are pretty decent picks. It's just there's nothing that's like, wow, there's nothing flashy at all. There's nothing that, like, steal. There's some reaches, some that, you know, how much of an impact they're going to make right away. Um, yeah, some reaches in there, like I said. Didn't love how, how much they gave away on the trade-up for Fisk, even though Fisk a decent player. It felt like a C-draft. Not great, not awful. Uh, and the Niners, I gave a C plus to it's C plus B minus. Pierce saw a pick was growing on me. I gave that one a B minus. Uh, Renardo Green is a tricky one because he was really good for Florida State. He was really good in press man, so he was really good in his specific. You know, that's what he does. Like that's such. It's very specific. NFL. There's a lot more zone than college. There's more and more zone in the NFL every single year. So the question is, how will he be in zone? The Niners are usually at all like an all zone team. So must be shifting more towards man. Interesting one. I like Pooney could start right away or play a key role as a rotational guy for guard or tackle. I like Mustafa right around where he should have went. Um, Grendel from Louisville. I think people were kind of overhyping him because his, his testing numbers, he, th- those things haven't really showed yet on the field, but he has some upside. I like Cowing, good slot receiver. You already drafted a slot receiver in Pearsall, but you get an explosive one here. Uh, then some decent picks the rest of the way. Didn't have too much on those guys. But, um, yeah, there's nothing like wow about this draft. Some that felt a little early, but guys that could contribute and help. There's some decent picks, some solid picks in there as well. So it felt like a C plus. So that is grades for all every single nfl team we can in the future near future we can kind of do this division by division uh or something you know if it's requested and we can kind of go a little more in depth for each team's uh draft class but um, a little more to get to recap in the draft check out our other videos covering the draft we even have an undrafted free agency video check out our sponsors liquid iv gld shop code goat that is gonna do it for this one thanks for watching goodbye